All right, what's going on guys? And today I wanted to do a little comparison video of the Yamaha TR1 Superjet versus the Kawasaki SXR 1500. Giving my opinions for both skis and what each ski does best. And I wanted to do this comparison because these two skis are pretty much your main two options uh, if you're looking to purchase a stand-up jet ski brand new. And starting with the TR1 Superjet, uh, the new Superjet is the ultimate all-around ski for someone looking to do a little bit of everything. It's got a top speed of 55 miles an hour, which if you're coming from the old two-stroke skis, uh, this is a pretty big jump up as the 701 super, round nose super jet that we have does only about 45 stock and when you compare the tr1 super jet to the sxr the sxr does go a little bit faster at 60 miles an hour top speed so with that in mind we are ranking the tr1 super jet at a four out of five on the speed scale and then jumping to acceleration, the TR1 is plenty strong to keep you excited and it gives you plenty of power when you want it, especially if you're jumping waves or something. It makes it really nice to have that extra bit of power and doesn't feel too heavy. I don't have any desire for it to have better pull, even though more power is always more fun. Uh, I don't have like a, a hunger for it. It doesn't feel lacking in that sense. But with that in mind, we're going to put the TR1 acceleration at a 4 out of 5. Then moving to our third topic of rideability. And this comes to mind for many factors when it comes to stand-up jet skis. The larger size of the TR1 Superjet and the Kawasaki SXR make it a lot easier for newer riders to learn the fundamentals of riding a stand-up jet ski. Whereas the older skis were a lot more difficult to hop on and go. Uh, there's a lot more balance involved, but the learning curve does seem to be uh, quite a bit faster on the newer skis, which is kind of cool, um, but you can still always get better. Um, I still get better every time I go out, and we've been riding for 10 years, so uh, that's what's so great about the hobby. It makes it so fun. Is it doesn't matter how many times you go out, you can get better each time you go out. While both skis are pretty easy to pick up and, and hop on and go, I will have to say that the Kawasaki does have a slight edge over the TR1 Superjet compared to the Kawasaki, and for this reason, the Superjet gets 4 out of 5. Then moving on to my favorite category, the wake jumping. Uh, this is what I think is the most fun on stand-up jet skis is jumping waves, and I can definitely say this is where the TR1 Superjet shines over the Kawasaki SXR. Uh, the Kawasaki SXR doesn't jump waves unless it's a huge wave um, and you're not getting near the air. Um, I feel like on the new Superjet, uh, I could get, without trying too hard, I could get high enough that it would be kind of scary or I feel like I might get hurt. Whereas the Kawasaki, it's not the case. It doesn't jump very well. But I don't see much of a difference really between the old two-stroke skis that jump awesome and the new TR1. I think they're both great options for for somebody who's looking to, to jump waves and, and get a little crazy. So I'm going to give the Superjet a 5 out of 5 on wake jumping. Now moving to the category of handling. Uh, this is a tricky category because uh, the handling of a ski is affected by weight, but the Superjet does lack quite a bit behind the Kawasaki and require a couple mods to really get it to a comfortable or sporty feel unlike the Kawasaki that is uh, pretty good straight out the box. Um, definitely recommend the Pro Watercraft steering nozzle quick steer plate uh, at minimum. Uh, a lot of people do go with a completely different steering system uh, so that's also a good option. And also a intake rate, which is pretty standard on most stand-up jet skis, to upgrade that. And usually you won't see any issues of starving the pump in a sharp turn. But even with the Riva intake rate that I have now, uh, I wish I would have went with a different one because even that one's not aggressive enough to feed water into the pump when you're doing an aggressive turn. 
So if you do those two mods, I give the Super Jet a 4 out of 5. If you leave it stock, I'd give the Handling a 3 out of 5. And for our second to final category, Playfulness, we gave it a 4 because it really shocked us with how nimble it is for being a four-stroke jet ski as uh, our first experience with four strokes was the Kawasaki and the TR1 just feels so much lighter and much more similar to our 701 Superjet. Being able to do water wheelies with ease and skids are little to no effort and overall the feel is lighter and more controllable and with me weighing 190 pounds it doesn't take much effort to do any of the tricks uh, that I like to do. Uh, something that I can't really do on the Kawasaki is the wheelies. Uh, I don't weigh enough. The Superjet, I can get it up to a 90 degree angle pretty easily. And then for our final category, value, uh, I give it 5 out of 5. Uh, the Superjet is just an all around great ski uh, for the money. It can't beat it. Uh, they are made in Japan. They're the only Yamaha ski made and assembled in Japan. Kind of has that going for it. And it's just got a great engine, sounds awesome. Really can't beat it for the price when you're comparing it to really everything except the Kawasaki, all these other race skis uh, that use the Kawasaki motor and all these trick skis. They're three, four, five times the cost for the money. I don't think you can go wrong with either ski, but Superjet is super cool. It's a unique toy that holds its value fairly well. And that's why I'm giving the Superjet 5 out of 5 on the value scale. And finally, you just got to appreciate how good the ski truly sounds with an exhaust. <laughs> Now moving on to the Kawasaki SXR 1500 and this is the ultimate budget race ski that handles turns and choppy water conditions best. It's also a great learner for someone new to stand-ups that can slowly grow into the sheer power and speed that this ski holds. So whether you're looking to cruise around the lake or want to lose feeling in your hands from squeezing the bars so hard from fear of falling off the ski on those full throttle pulls. This ski is for you. Starting the first category of speed, the Kawasaki gets a 5 out of 5 with a max top speed of 60 miles an hour straight out the box. And I can easily say for somebody who's new to stand-ups, 60 miles an hour is terrifying and is definitely something that you want to work up to. Uh, you'll find out pretty quickly that 60 miles an hour is crazy on a stand-up jet ski. Which brings us to our second category of acceleration, where the Kawasaki wins again. Uh, the acceleration on this thing is just insane. And I think it also speaks volumes that the Pro Force stand up jet skis that are like notorious for the race scene uh, and the stand up classes, uh, they use the same Kawasaki motor as the SXR. And given the fact that those cost over double what the Kawasaki costs, uh, for just a turnkey ski, I think the Kawasaki is the best bang for your buck for sheer power. Now moving on to the rideability category. Like I said previously, the Kawasaki is the easiest to hop on and learn how to ride and is the most predictable in terms of doing turns, especially at my weight of 190 pounds. Uh, it just wants to hook. It doesn't seem like it's going to slip when I go into a turn. It's super stable compared to the other skis. Um, even just kind of cruising along, sometimes I'll crash on the other skis just because I lose balance or just not paying attention. And I don't have a tendency to do that as much on the Kawasaki. Uh, even when you're going top speed, uh, it still feels not as sketchy as the smaller skis at their top speed. And I think this has a lot to do with its larger mass compared to the other skis and for that reason I'm giving the rideability of the Kawasaki a 5 out of 5 and then moving on to our next category of wake jumping. Uh, wake jumping on the ski is a little bit more difficult. It's not as great of a jumper but I don't think that's really what it was designed for. 
that being said, you can get some decent air if it's a big enough wave, but it does have to be a pretty large wave before you're getting completely airborne on the Kawasaki, or you have to be doing a pretty decent amount of speed before you can have liftoff. And for that reason, the Kawasaki only gets a 2 out of 5 on wake jumping. And then up next on our list is the handling. And like I said previously, handling is phenomenal straight out the box. Uh, there's nothing you really need. Uh, intake rate, obviously, is always nice. But uh, straight out the box, the Kawasaki is just phenomenal. It really kind of goes with what the ski feels like it was designed for, which is handling and racing. Uh, so... I'm giving the handling 5 out of 5. And for our second to final category, playfulness, the ski will do skids. And if you weigh 250 plus pounds, it will do wheelies. As you can see here, I just can't get the bow to pop up enough. And does require significantly more effort to do maneuvers. Even turning, you do have to lean with it more. But I think that's more of a skill thing, uh, learning how the ski handles. But all things considered, I would give the playfulness of the Kawasaki a 3 out of 5 stars. And then moving on to our final category of value. Uh, like I said, this is the best bang for your buck for top speed racing ski. That's great for new and experienced riders. Handling choppy water conditions best. And just overall a great value for the money. Uh, they're both super reliable skis. And that's why I gave the Kawasaki a 5 out of 5 on value as well. And before we compare stats, I wanted to show you how the Kawasaki sounds. And finally, here's the rankings for both skis. And the total would be out of 35. And the Superjet... On first on the list, we'll get a 30 out of 35, while the Kawasaki will get a 30 out of 35 as well. Uh, just wanted to show that they're both great skis. One's not really necessarily better than the other. Each has its advantages. But I hope you guys found this video interesting. Uh, drop a comment below what you guys think is the cooler ski. I appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.